Hey guys, welcome back to the Creator Club save here with Chesnoid FC. We are 15 games from the end of the season. 15 games ago, we were a long way from the top two. 15 or 16 points or so. Now, that gap is just eight to second place side Norwich. It's fluctuated a little bit over the past few episodes. It was as low as five, but it extended a little bit again as we've dropped some points here or there. But we've had a strong transfer window. And hopefully we can have a strong end to the season. At the very least, we should be finishing in the playoffs this year. If not, I want that second spot. That is my target. Today, we have five games. Four in the league and one in the cup. And I want to play Arsenal to see just where this squad actually is with regards to Premier League opposition. We'll sim Preston and we'll sim Coventry as those two sides are the lowest of the four that we play today in the league. We'll play Queen's Park Rangers and we'll play Bristol City, both of which happen to be home games. And then it will be the trip to uh, the Emirates to play Arsenal in the final game. We're at full strength and full fitness. They are, well, not remotely close to full fitness. I don't know about strength, but certainly not fitness. And the result is a 2-0 win for us. McGree with the first and Iago with the first. Oh, sorry, McGree with the second and Iago with the first. Iago's been scoring a handful of goals from left back in these simulated games recently. And I'm really, really pleased with it. Now, hopefully we can boost morale with some positive comments here in the post-match press conference. And that will get even more out of the side as we look to have a strong end to the season. An end to the season which I want to see us promoted from. Whether we will or not remains to be seen. But I hope to get us promoted this season. I think we need to get promoted this season. Another approach made for Zachary Carr. This time from Borussia Mönchengladbach. Obviously, I am unable to uh, offer him a new contract now. Having just negotiated a new one with him, I delegated it. And rather, obviously, I just made a mistake. Delegated a new contract. Wasn't paying full attention or must not have been paying full attention. And didn't see that whilst it did alter his wages, they didn't actually add an extension to the time left on his deal. So he signed a new deal for more money for the same amount of time, which means he still runs out of contract at the end of the year. So, fuck my life. So we're going to lose Zachary Carr at the end of the season. We knew we wanted a new goalkeeper anyway, but we were hoping uh, that Zach Carr would be able to end his career with us, which evidently doesn't look like it's going to happen. So Queen's Park Rangers at home, followed by Bristol City at home, Coventry away, and then Arsenal away. And fingers crossed... What's the gap now? Oh, Norwich have lost. The gap's five. Who did Norwich have? Norwich just can't help themselves but throw points away at the moment. Norwich had Forest, who are fifth, and they lost 4-2 at the city ground. Come on, then. Let's get ourselves even closer. Queen's Park Rangers, Lyndon Dykes up top, Elias Chair in the midfield as well. Luke Amos there too, Jordi Device and Rob Dickey at the back. Odebarjo's decent right back too. Don't really know much about Archer in goal. It was the substitute goalkeeper that we played against last time, Dieng. So I don't know whether he's actually going to be any good. They got Hemelen and at uh, left back, so we'll wait and see if he's any good. But Queen's Park Rangers sat in a decent position so far this season, although obviously they'll be wanting to push to try and get themselves towards a playoff spot if they can. Time to crack on with the rest of our season then. Let's get the job done this year. We weren't able to get promotion back to the Premier League last season. This year, I want it. Grady, Grady? Yeah, Grady Diangana. My brain was, said, brain was telling me Dario Grady. Crew flashbacks from the early 2000s, mid-90s. Oh my God, it's a cool with a hell of a head up, but it's over the bar. Dykes into Kelman. They apparently have one of the strongest home records in the league, which I was genuinely unaware of prior to this fixture. Get this all the way out to Grady Diangana. Try and pull it back. Julian Alvarez looking for Randy and Keta. And Tekka. And Tekka. And Tekka. Not and Keta. And Tekka. Why do I always say and and Keta? I have no idea whatsoever. I'm just gonna call him Randy, I think. Either that or I need to sell him and sign Eddie and Ketia, because then I might actually get it bloody right. Big switch from Johansson. It's decent too. Hemelin can't get it under control. The left back pushed a long way forward. Diangana on the counter. Hoping to get a little bit more out of Grady Diangana now that he's back from injury. Side are performing better than they were when he left us. So fingers crossed. He can just add to what has been a side that 
is certainly improving as time goes on here. Looking for Julian Alvarez here. It's a sharp turn. The shot can't come in. Oh, and it does from Enteca. But it's wider the target. Just trying to latch onto the loose ball as it bobbled free. Kind of like Emil Smith throw it. Uh, the King Power yesterday with Arsenal's game against Leicester. Just bobble free to him and he swept it home. Randy and Tekka can't do that on this occasion, but we are certainly putting the pressure on here and a goal may well be coming soon. And as I say that, it will probably end up being Queen's Park Rangers that are the ones that get it. Where are you going? Well, you just run away from it. Idiot. QPR have offered nothing going the other way, so... I don't expect them to do that for the full 90. In fact, they may even be scoring here or at least having the chance to do so. And Alainen forward from left back as he has spent the entirety of this half basically on the edge of my box. Good block. How's your luck? Well, Zachary Carr makes a great reaction save and you can see how pleased he is with that. Johansson looping. Keeper's not come. Dyke's there and Carr makes the save again, but... He should have come to claim that, the goalkeeper. Elias Che will again take the corner. And again, the keeper's not come. And again, Dykes can't finish. It's Luke Amos. Nice tackle by Iago. Stood firm as well and rode the secondary challenge. Look at that out wide here to Jaden Braff. And he's looking to get in behind Odebarjo, but he's no slouch. In a straight line is Moses. Randy and Tekka from the edge of the box. Why is he shaped on his left there? I... Tried to shape it on his right. He's got a five-star weak foot. I wanted to try and bend that into the far top corner. Or into the far corner at, very, at the very least, regardless of whether it was high or low. Ah, bit of misdirection. Jaden Braff. No. Oh, Archer with the save. Really good chance. Works superbly. Up we go, please. Come on, then. Oh, what a save from the goalkeeper to tip it onto the bar. Can you believe it? Jaden Braff. Trying to build something else. Here's, ah, it's Akuro's overrun it. And the chance is gone. I can't believe the keeper stopped that. Still, we look likely to score a goal here, but still we can't. Fuck it. Oh, it's a lovely ball inside. It's Akuro gets a foot in, and Braff will lock, knock this in front of Riley McGreen. I've got two options here. Need to choose the right one. I hope I have. Ball is back. Riley McGree. Ferguson. Oh, no. Come on. That's the bar and the post hit now. What have we got to do to score against Queen's Park Rangers, eh? Jesus Christ. Losing my mind here. And now Dykes is on his own. Uwe Martin flattens him. And that surely had to be a foul. He went through the man to get to the ball. I think he should questionably have been sent off for that. You guys will have to let me know what your opinion is of that challenge. But I don't think it was that good. Oh, and Jane Brothers trying to play the pass inside. He's got caught on it. I'm going to have to make some changes. It's just not working in this game so far. I'm going to bring Broder on. And we're going to bring Ben Brereton Diaz on for Dean Garner. And see if we can try something else. Through to Johansson. You can feel it coming, can't you? I'm Elaine. And I was going to somehow bobble free. And Carr tips that over the bar. You can feel it coming. You know Queen's Park Rangers are going to score a goal and win this. You can just sense it in the air. Is the keeper going to come for that? He's not. Broja's underneath it. Ben Brereton going to come out to this. He'll do the voice back. It's loose. As is that pass. Barbet. Dykes. Well intercepted by Masson. Come on then. Come on then. Oh, ref. Was playing the ball forward towards Julian Alvarez there. And he just got caught on it. Brereton Diaz looking for Broja. Who spun the man well. Oh, were you onside? He was! No! Great save by Archer. Oh, can't score! <sighs> Surely a goal's got to come in this game. It can't end nil-nil. Oh, but it may well. It's not long left in this game. Oh, Riley McGree has intercepted that nicely. We'll have to knock this in front of Lewis Ferguson. Who will look for Broja. Oh, ref, Surely! Penalty in the 91st minute, and the ref might be going to his back pocket here. He is red card for Queen's Park Rangers captain, Johan Barbet. He's just got to the ball first, bros. I was about to pull the trigger. The keeper may well have saved it. Red card for their captain, Julian Alvarez. Broja has better penalties, and he earns it by winning it. 
Oh, I'm so tempted to go straight down the middle. To make it one -nil. Yes! Huge goal! Massive goal in the grand scheme of this season. Scenes at the end of the game. Massive scenes at the end of the game. Oh, you cannot understand fully the relief that is in this office right now. Biggest penalty of our entire season. Biggest goal of our entire save, perhaps, that drives us on towards that automatic promotion spot. Oh, my God. Broja with the last kick of the game to give us a 1-0 win at home against Queen's Park Rangers. We have one of the best home records in the league. That's 12 wins now in 17 home games. Get in. Three points are massive for us on this occasion. Absolutely huge. don't think Norwich are actually playing on this match day. They weren't. So what that does for the league table, I don't actually know. But with Bristol City upcoming, another home game. Another one where we absolutely need to make sure we get the victory by any means necessary. We were... Unlucky not to have scored prior to the 91st minute, but so very lucky that their defender there threw himself at Broja. He may well have scored from the open play opportunity, but with how well their goalkeeper was playing, you couldn't guarantee it. Much better chance from the spot. The gap is five points. Norwich won on their match day 33. Barnsley keep winning. Swansea and Nottingham Forest keep pace with us too. It's not over yet by a long stretch. Bristol City with Daniel Bentley in goal. Callum O'Dowder leading the line. Casey Palmer, Cameron Pring and Andreas Weiman in a three behind O'Dowder, I think. And Semenyo and Williams in the two central midfield roles. Bristol City, top half of the table, just. They're definitely a beatable side. But so have we been on far too many occasions. We're in good form. And chances were being created against Queen's Park Rangers. There is no denying that. Let's just hope that on this occasion, they go in more regularly. They may well. Oh, that would have been such a good goal. It would have been such a good goal. Why could that not have gone in? Son, driven into Jaden Braff. Out to Iago at left back. And through to Randy and Tekka. Ferguson. Oh, please, this has to be and is 1-0. Julian Alvarez clean through the middle. The chances have come and this time they are going in. We lead by a goal to nil. Ah, oh, caught in possession as I was trying to pull that back to Julian Alvarez. But actually, we get the free kick. Now, do I take this short and quickly? I think I might do. Play it back again from whence it came. Oh. Oh, I should have hit it first time with Ferguson, shouldn't I? We're playing some really nice interlinking stuff in this game, aren't we? Riley McGree with the delivery. Julian Alvarez is a man looking to be underneath it. Not necessarily the go-to man to be underneath a cross. The one that's like five foot seven, but never mind. I think Randy Diangana was just offside there. <gasps> oh, he was. Oh, the finish was sublime as well. Why did you have to be offside, Grady? Pring to Semenyo. Vyman to Williams, forward to O'Dowder. Oh, they're trying a bit of... Whoa, they're trying a bit of Chesnoy FC interlinking passing. Whoop, out the way. And it didn't work for them on this occasion. It came close, though. Well, I agree. Determined to get forward here. And has run straight into Williams. That was unstoppable force, immovable object. Unfortunately, the immovable object won. Win this header. Thank you. Up we go. Well up. Randy and Tekka brings it down. Broza is not far away from a start. But he certainly made a great impact off the bench in the last game. So I'm sticking with Anteca for now. But Randy can't get to that. And Callas will find his keeper. It's a hell of a ball out from the goalkeeper. But it very nearly fell straight to me. Half an hour played. Still 1-0. That's a lovely ball into Callum O'Dowder. And back. And back. Semenyo. Wide. Out there to Braff. Yeah. Oh. Crazy interception from Viner there. Well done by Lewis Ferguson, though. We hold the lead till half-time at the very least. Maybe we can extend it. Julian Alvarez looking for Randy Enteca. His first touch to take him past the defender. Yes, we can extend it. Randy Enteca. Broza may have had the impact off the bench last time around, and he's probably not far away from a start. But whilst he keeps scoring, he stays up top. 
to the left back and bring forward again Semenya. Oh, that's a lovely ball into Odaldo. He's going to go for goal and draw a good save at the goalkeeper. Chance from nothing. Just a spin on the edge of the box. I expected the extra pass, which didn't come. Andy Vyman going off and Scott coming on for Bristol City. Palmer will deliver and has delivered. And Ryan Niam is the man that's underneath it. Someone we looked at for right back. Ended up going with Masson instead. And I'm quite happy with that decision. Oh, he went through there, didn't he? Plenty hell. That patch that they made recently to uh, alter or one of the things in the patch they made to make the AI slightly more aggressive in the tackle definitely worked, didn't it? Julian Alvarez, all space out here for Jaden Braff. Looks to turn inside and bend it. He's bent it straight to the defender's foot. Itakura swept out wide. We've had so much of the ball, as you can see from the stats there, that Bristol City really were up against it right from the off. As soon as that first goal went in, we've been in control of the tie. And Itakura couldn't get the ball out of his feet quickly enough there to find the pass. But they've given it a good old go, Bristol City. And they are playing some half-decent stuff at times. Just haven't had that final ball. And I know how they feel. He's got to be offside. No, he wasn't. Bloody hell. I know how they feel because I've been in that position countless times in this save so far. In the nearly three years that we've been manager here at Chesnoid FC. Building, building, building. And just not able to find that final ball. Or that final pass. Or that final shot. And then conceding at the other end. Which is what has happened to them. Trying to bump Semenyo off that. Oh, Eva Martin with a hell of an interception there. Iago goes centrally to Andy and Teca. Forward to Julian Alvarez. Oh, he's past the defender and skips past him beautifully. Surely, surely, surely this has to be three. And indeed it is. A game over. Palmer swept across. Finds O'Dowda. Back to Scott. And O'Dowda again. Good block. Oh, Eva Martin, it just hit him. I reckon if we had handballs still on for... Penalties in the box. That probably would have been given as one. We do still have handballs turned on. Just for everything but pens. Grady D and Garner played in down the right-hand side. Oh, plenty to aim for in the middle. And aim for it we will. And Alvarez. Well, his header wasn't too far away. It wasn't he that I was aiming for. I was looking for Mr. Inteca in the middle. It's Alvarez's last action of the game. As we make a couple of changes. Caden Clark on for him in the central cam roll. And uh, Lassagash on in the midfield for Riley McGree to give him a little bit of a run out and some more first team football. There's the final whistle. That championship promotion train keeps on chugging. And forward we go once more with another set of three points. A much, much more accomplished performance in front of goal on this occasion. We get the scoreline that accurately depicts the flow of the game, which we didn't in the last one, but at least we got the result. Did see that Norwich won by two or three goals to nil against Preston in their game. But Bristol City just, quite frankly, couldn't cope with our attacking talent in that fixture. And that's the way that the majority of fixtures this year should go with the squad that we have. It's finding that sort of performance super consistently that we haven't been able to do. Sold Kai Middleton to Peterborough. It's one of the thousand goalkeepers that we have. And Chelsea are frustrated that Chaloba hasn't been playing too much. But he was signed as... A squad player, and a squad player he remains, unfortunately. Next for us was a sim against Coventry, and then we'll play Arsenal. Coventry are 19th in the table, so this should be straightforward. Should be. Wasn't. Two goals in the 90th minute, one per team. Thankfully, the game was decided by then. We could have three goals in two minutes if Ferguson's... Penalty hadn't been missed. Grady D and Garner with a goal as well. Julian Alvarez with two. And Ferguson on the score sheet too. Yes, he went 1-0 down early doors. Again, another another penalty taken in a sim game that's missed. I, I did bring that up to the devs before. So I'm waiting on a response for that. My managerial rating continues to drop. I think probably because we're still not in an automatic promotion spot. But... We certainly won't get sacked this year, that's for sure. Unless we don't go up. And then we're, we might be in trouble. Obviously, we've we've got to reach the round of 16 of the FA Cup for the board to be satisfied with our performance. But if we go out to Arsenal, that's understandable. And if it were Football Manager, then the board would say, 
We expected you to get to the round of 16, but we understand why we lost to Arsenal. Whereas on FA, on uh, FIFA, they're just quite simply going to say, you didn't get there, it's not good enough. Regardless of the fact that we've come up against one of the better sides in the Premier League, they don't take that into account. So this is the round of 16 of the FA Cup coming up now. And uh, I'm in a position where I kind of need to win it, really. Oh, no. Okay. All right. I genuinely thought that we hadn't had that tick checked because last time I checked it, it wasn't ticked. All right. Doesn't matter then. All guns blazing. Let's see what we can take to Arsenal. This then will be a proper test. Genuine proper test of what we might be able to do moving forward. And a familiar face in there as well, you'll notice. Number five, second on the list at right back for Arsenal here today. Devin Wrench. A man that stayed with us last season, but we couldn't get back to the Premier League. So he left to go to the Premier League. And to Arsenal he went. And in their starting lineup, he is. This could get ugly against Arsenal. As it did with Premier League sides in Season 1. But we are five times the side we were in Season 1. But we may not yet have enough to challenge a side like Arsenal with a squad like theirs. We shall wait and see, but certainly you can see the standard of football being played is already, obviously, much higher. Mia out wide to Nicola Pepe. Devin Wrench. I wonder what he's rated at now. He's, what, 82 when he left us? I'd be curious to know. I'd also be open to bringing him back to the club at one point in this save. Oh, my God. Because, hopefully, we'll find ourselves at some point in a position where we're of the level that we can justify bringing him back. And because he's so young, even if that takes another four years here at Chesnoid FC, he'll still be only in his mid-20s, so he'll still be a cracking player. Indeed, he almost forgot the ball there. Or oh, just bobble free. I don't even know what happened there. Here's Diop on the left-hand side for them forward into Kevin Folland and Carr at full stretch to make the save. Folland, I think, is left-footed, so to see him strike that on his right is a, a strange decision. I might be wrong there, but I think he's left-footed. Riley McGree is trying to race away from the men that were around him. Nicola Pepe is going to be too quick for me, though. Sharp turn to keep the ball away from the Arsenal man, though. We are having to defend quite hard, but defending well so far. No goals yet. To add to the point I was making earlier, or the question I posed... Devon Wrench is now 85 rated. So until we're a Champions League side, he's not coming back to Chesnoid FC. That is for damn sure. He's completely outgrown us now. And this club has got to go astronomically higher if we're to even stand the chance of beckoning a player like that back to the club. Smith Rowe building nicely down the left-hand side of Arsenal's attack. Still looking for that first goal. I don't really want a replay because the fixer list is busy enough in the championship without extra games. And considering we have now confirmed that we've tipped that objective for the board, I'm not that fussed about losing this. It's more just a chance to test ourselves than anything else. But oh, I could send... Oh, there was an extra defender there I hadn't seen. I was trying to send Julian Alvarez away. Jaden Braff is in behind here, up against Devon Wrench. He's defended it well, and I can't find the pass. Half an hour in, though. Still nil-nil. We're doing all right so far. Iago, see you, Kevin. Bye. Just leaving Kevin Folland for dead there. McGree, Inter and Tekka. And there's space here for Jaden Bruff. And Randy and Tekka is back there again. But Devin Wrench does brilliantly to ensure that I don't get away. They have had a lot of the ball, Arsenal. But there's not been that many chances in this game. Only one shot on target for them. And, well, none for me. I really haven't had the opportunity to test burnt Leno yet at all, but still an opportunity might present itself. Maybe even right here, right now. Braff. Oh, brilliant save. Burnt Leno has been tested, but Leno passes that test, tipping it round the post and out for a corner. Delivery. Ah, it's poor. It'll fall for Braff. I'll knock that down. So Iago that it finds its way to. He scored some goals in sim games recently, and that was well struck, at least from left back. Can Uwe Martin win this header? Yes, he can. 
Braff trying to wrong foot the defender, and he's done well. Randy and Tekka find Suli Alvarez, who spun brilliantly, and around the corner here is Greedy and Garner, and Bert Leno's there again to make the save. Another corner. Can't believe we haven't tucked that home. Decent delivery. Julian Alvarez can't flick it towards goal. Arsenal will clear, but at the minute, holding our own here and looking like we might take them all the way here, Arsenal. Nil-nil at the break. Masson. Inside to Ferguson. Do I go patient in this second half and play the ball about and trust my players in possession? Or do I just try and catch Arsenal napping and race at them quickly? I don't know which way to do it. We kind of tried both in the first half. And neither was massively successful, to be completely honest. But we have had to give up a lot of possession against Arsenal. So I guess most of our play has been on the counter. We haven't had a prolonged spell of possession really throughout the entirety of the game. Nice little back heel. This is excellent from Arsenal. It's absolutely superb. And if Nicola Pepe had gone for goal there, he may well have scored, but he tried to square it across and the defender got there. That's a mistake from them. Uwe Martin should win this header. He hasn't. Saliba does. Tipped over the bar by the goalkeeper. Nicola Pepe will deliver again. Will this one be better? It's not bad. Folland up over the bar. Masson. Driven centrally. That wasn't where I wanted that ball to go, but it's where it's ended up. And and Teka, is he fouled there, ref? No. Just too strong, the defender. That's where the quality of someone like Darwin Nunez would come in handy. That extra bit of quality, that extra bit of ability on the ball and strength would really help. Diop is forcing himself all the way to the corner flag here, but maybe it's to drag my defence about so we can find a way in behind. Smith Rowe. Nice tackle by Itakura out for the corner. See what's going to happen here. Nicola Pepe oh, does go short in the end. Diop to Pepe again. Is he going to try and stand up on his left? No, just excellent footwork. Diop, Pepe, back to Saliba. And indeed, Smith throws out there. Driving around the outside. Certainly notice the difference in quality between Arsenal and our usual championship Opposition. I'm sure you guys have noticed it in the highlights as well. Here's Mia and Nicola Pepe. But in season one, we may well have been two or three goals down by this point in the game. And we are still fighting. And still hoping to get something from it. Oh, but Bernd Leno is ensuring that we don't. If the first pass had made it, maybe. We weren't quite able to find it. Right. Changes and Teka for Broja, I think, and Ben Brereton for Dean Garner. And I think that's all for now. I think that's all for now. Let's see what we can do. And Teka going off, and uh, hopefully Broja, Broja, sorry, can have the impact he did. Oh, the keeper's not come for that, and Broja's got to bury it. He has to have that on target. There's no excuse. I brought you off the bench. You had could have had the immediate impact, and he hasn't. Indeed, he swept beautifully out to Rain and Lodi. Is this where Arsenal turn the screw? Jonathan Bamber off the bench. Get to that. Trying to get rid of it. Little touch. Just little things could decide this game now. Like not being able to squeeze past the defender in that situation. Four minutes to go. I'd be devastated if they win it now, Arsenal. Oh, and Nicola Pepe's onside. Well, it's pulled past the post. When it opened up for him like that, I thought, here we go. Here comes the scripting comments down below when this flies in. But it didn't. It's gone wide. Arsenal make the change, though. So Balogun on for Emil Smith-Rowe. They waited quite late in the game to make their changes. And there is still plenty of opportunity left in this fixture. And in this tie, McGree, Julian Alvarez... I mean, the offside trap has worked wonders there because I had everybody pushed all the way forward. Oh, excellent footwork by Julian Alvarez. Ambrosia and Ben Brereton around the outside. Four minutes added on here. If we can find someone on the end of this, or maybe from the corner, we might just win it. We'll put Julian Alvarez on the delivery, actually. See if we can't get someone who's a little bit taller in the middle on the end of it. We might do Itakura over the bar. Now, is that extra time? At this stage, 
of the FA Cup, or is that a replay? I don't think it's a replay. I think we go to an extra 30 minutes. Indeed we do. Well, more to come. Bamba. Renan Lodi. Lodi into Mia. Jetson off the bench for them. It's Kevin Folland. Mia tackled. Then Brereton gets it forward to Julian Alvarez. He's on the run there, Broja. Oh, and he won't make it to it. What an interception by Renan Lodi. Wow. Broja was in behind there and away. Nicola Pepe with another lovely touch. Here's Jetson Fernandez again to Folland. Early by Balogun. It's going to drop. Oh, I'll tell you what, Zachary Carr, we owe you a hell of a lot. He's so good. Oh, I tried to do a Berber spin. It didn't work. We'll take the throw. 100 minutes played. We might be headed for our first ever penalty shootout here in this save. Don't think we've had one so far at Chesnoid FC. And it's probably the only way we could probably an anticipate being able to get a victory in this game is from the penalty spot, whether that be oh, from open play or a penalty shootout. Kevin Folland trying to work something, but one minute added on at the end of the first half of extra time is going to lead to continually a nil-nil score draw. Nil-nil score draw. A nil-nil scoreless draw here. 15 to go, otherwise it is to be pens. Martin, forward to Caden Clark, who's fresh off the bench for me. Jaden Braff onto the bench, and Julian Alvarez drifts out wide left now as Clark comes on at camp. They've brought on Odson Edward at striker, who they've obviously signed from Palace. Oh, that is a chop at some point in this save. Absolutely flattened there, Broja. Here's Ben Brereton Diaz. And the cross is terrible, unfortunately. Eight minutes to go now. We really are getting very, very, very close to a penalty shootout here. Mia to Jetson Fernandez. Out wide to Nicola Pepe. Also on Edouard up top has me shook, I'll be honest. If Julio now is going to intercept like that for the rest of the game, we'll be fine. Then Brereton is out wide. Oh, but the ball gets away from Ferguson. He falls over trying to get it back. Here's Odson Edouard and Nicola Pepe. Nice tackle. Iago is going to chase after it with all the might and strength and stamina he has left. Devon Wrench, can he deliver a killer blow to his former team? Not yet. Iago away. Wrench, Odson Edouard. Mia! Saved by Carr. If they score now, I call scripting. Nicola Pepe with the corner in the 122nd minute. I have no response. I have nothing to say. Nothing that would be constructive. What utter shite. Arsenal 1. Chesnoid FC 0. <sighs> You could call it the other way with the way that our penalty came about in the game against Queen's Park Rangers. But that is particularly tough to take. Really, really tough to take. Brentford won at Manchester United nil, by the way. I don't really know how to end the episode now. Hand on heart, genuinely, I don't believe scripting is a thing. I genuinely, even after that, I genuinely don't believe scripting is a thing. But it's moments like that that leads to the conspiracy theories. Monthly scouting report from Chile. Anything of any note? 48 to 66. 43 to 59, get in the bin. Where are my Chilean stars? 
Where are these young youth players that are supposed to be amazing? As opposed to old youth players that are supposed to be amazing. I can't find any of them. Two points the gap to Norwich. I've just noticed. What the hell? They drop points again. Two points the gap to Norwich. Automatic promotion is absolutely on the cards now. And we've Norwich to play fucking tomorrow. Or do we? Mm, six games. Derby, Swansea, Luton. Norwich, Fulham, Forest. Jesus Christ, what episode that would be. Yeah. We'll split it. We'll play Derby, Swansea, Luton tomorrow. And then Norwich, Fulham, Forest the episode after that. Bournemouth, Cardiff, Barnes, B -B 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 Barnsley, Huddersfield and Sunderland. The remaining games after that. That's particularly tough to take. That's very tough to take. But, I'd rather lose that and stand the chance of getting automatic promotion than have beaten Arsenal and still be eight points off Norwich. So, it is what it is. Join me again tomorrow for more. You ain't going to want to miss the end of this season. I'll see you then.